I did a couple of ergonomic chair reviews over the past year and because of that, I've gathered some knowledge on what are some of the pros and cons of each model. And I've also received a lot of questions from you guys and I thought it'll be a good idea to put all the questions in one video and answer them for you. Re-answer them for you. So today, we're gonna be doing just that. Let's talk about it. I don't have my uh, coffee today, but I do have my trusty flower mug that has a secret drink, which I won't show you guys. All right, so why don't we start with the latest uh, review I did. Let me just pull up the questions here. Boss, ano pong height nyo? I am 5'9", 5'9 and 3 fourths, or 177 centimeters. I'll put the number right here. So, now you know. Okay, here's another one. Hi there. Thanks for another good review. How's the V1 so far? Does the high armrest affect you in any way? I am around 155 centimeters. Do you recommend the V1 for this range of height? Two questions. So, I'll answer the first one. Does the armrest bother me? Um, not so much. I mean, it's not ideal. I, mean, I can't uh, tuck my chair under my desk but i'm okay with it you know i can still use the chair um, in a comfortable position in such a way that my arms are level with the table and that uh, together with the reclining function outweighs the high armrest so it's good for me i mean i'm okay with that the second question was I'm around 155 centimeters. Would you recommend this for me? I would say yes. Um, the, the back is adjustable. So, you know, there's a good range of heights of people that can use this chair. So 155 centimeters, I think still uh, falls within that range. Okay, so here's another one. Hey bro, just want to know your thoughts on the Sihu M93 and overall Sihu chairs. That's a loaded question. I'm having a bad habit when more than often leaning back for stretching. And I broke several chairs because of that. Would these CU chairs back stand for a long time? I actually do it a lot. Like, you know, when you lean back like this and try to stretch throughout the day when I'm working and when I'm doing something else, I do it a lot. And I've done it in all of the chairs that I've tested. And so far, none of them showed any signs of wear and tear by doing that. So I don't think, you know, it will break because of that. So, yeah. These were questions on the M25. This is the uh, one of the high-end models for Sihu. May I ask, where did you buy your table? <laughs> so the table I actually bought from Shopee. It's an IKEA Ekbakken desk. It's a countertop. And then I've got to um, Alex drawers. I think for, for all of them, I, I paid like 18,000 pesos, if I'm not mistaken. It's going to be cheaper um, once IKEA opens. So if you want to get that combination, I suggest you wait for IKEA opening in the Philippines. Does the difference between this and the M57 is significant? Yes! <laughs> um, when you compare some of the... Um, top tier ones versus the entry level ones there's going to be a lot of difference um, especially for this model one of the biggest differences um, to me was the adaptive lumbar support prior to testing this i was really skeptic that it um, wouldn't provide much support but i was surprised uh, at how good it was in fact the m25 is the most comfortable chair I've tested um, all throughout the um, Sihu lineup and it has the most sturdy build as well. It has the most metal parts. The only thing is it's expensive. It's uh, 25,000 and uh, I guess rightfully so, right? Because you get premium quality and premium comfort. So there's a lot of, there's a big difference. The M57 is an entry level ergonomic chair it gets you the basic but it does not have some of the other adjustments like back adjustments it doesn't have that let's see let's try to answer 
some of the questions here. This one is interesting. Do you think the headrest and the footrest will peel over time since it isn't made of mesh? The material on this one feels like it's leatherette. You know, not real leather, but um, some of the variations of it. I have mine for more than six months, uh, half a year now, and it does not have any signs of uh, peeling. But, of course, uh, I think it will. It's just a matter of time, right? If it's two years, one year, three years, I don't know yet. Hi, first thank you for reviewing this chair in detail. I have a question about the chair leg pedal. Does it have a lock on a certain angle? Do to because I want the pedal to half rise and not full. Thanks. The footrest of the V1 does not have a um, tilt locking uh, mechanism. So you can only do it fully stretched or not. The answer is no. You can't um, tilt it or lock it in a certain way. He's saying I'm 175 cm in height and weighs approximately 180 kgs. So, a little on the heavy side. I mean, not judging, I'm also heavy. That's fine. I need the chair to fit under the table when not in use. Which model stands lower at the lowest setting? Okay. Uh, I was looking at the Sihu M57 with the footrest, and that will cost around 9.5k when I saw your video of the V1. The V1 with footrest retails around 16k. I want to know your thoughts. Is it worth the additional 65% of the cost given the V1 and my circumstance? So the question is the difference between the Sihu and the M57. I first started with the Sihu M57 and I was really happy with it. I used it for I think uh, about 3 months, 3 or 4 months. And then I got into testing the V1. It was sent to me to test the V1. Um, and I was supposed to return it and I did it because I bought it. Right? I, I ended up buying it because I liked it so much. The reason I liked it is because the way it reclines. But that's a personal uh, preference. Not all the Sihu chairs recline as far back as the Sihu V1. I think that's the only one that does it at 140 degrees. Other ones are you know, just reclining at 130 degrees. But they weren't meant to. I mean, they weren't really designed to recline that low. Uh, I, I think the V1 was an exception. And I, I liked it because of that, right? In terms of comfort, I was comfortable using the M57. Uh, but the, re the real reason that I went with the V1 is because of how good I can recline with it. Obviously, there's uh, some comfort benefits as well, right? It would have been perfect for me if the, the armrests were a little bit lower. That would have made it perfect for me. To me, that was uh, the selling point. Um, the reclinability. Justifying the difference is really dependent on you. right? If you feel that all of those additional adjustments to you is worth that much, then go ahead. If not, then you know if you're only working with the 8,000 peso budget, then the M57 is a good enough entry. All right, this, this, this one is actually important. My problem now is I weigh 118 kilograms, 260 pounds. And I saw in another video that the V1 was sagging on the seat part in the few months because of constant use. Okay, so sagging. Um, I've been asked this question a couple of times. And to me, this is a bit tricky because it's, it's relative, right? Some people might say that my chair is sagging and to others, it might not be sagging. My V1 though has lost some of its tightness, but I wouldn't say it's sagging. I would say it's more of a uh, break-in. So now it's a little bit more flexible because there's a little bit of give. As opposed to when it was new, it was really tight. While it's not the same as you know the day I bought it, it's not. I wouldn't consider it sagging, if that makes sense. Yeah, and one more point to add about the sag. I actually spoke to 
things we use Philippines and I don't think there's there's anyone who has returned um, the chair because of the sack um, they mentioned there's one but it's a factory defect but so far none has returned the chair because it was sagging so I don't think sagging is a real concern this one was from cat okay how sturdy is it does it wobble a lot do you think it's worth the extra money it's very sturdy um, does it wobble a lot compared to the m57 it does not wobble as much you know the armrest has although it has only one um, mechanism to tighten it it's um, very solid right because the issue with the m57 is the armrest kind of wobble and i think that that's the same with, with the m90c as well because they're basically the same do you think it's worth the money to me it is um, because i bought it and again it's a personal reason like i, I like the reclining um angle a bit um some of you guys might not think that's reason enough but to me that's reason enough and the additional flexibility i think it's worth um the additional money choco muffin cake hi which one do you prefer b1 or m57 does m57 armrest fit nicely with your table height so yes, the M57 armrest, um, if, I, if I put it down, it does fit under my table. And if you're wondering, my height table is 29 inches. And I prefer the V1. This one was from Patrick Biloria. Hi, I don't know if this question has been asked already. I just got my V1 with footrest and I want to ask if there's a lock for back recline. Yes, there is. There are three stops and the lowest one is 140 degrees. Have you ever fallen off the chair while reclined? 15,500 is a little too high for me, but I'll check the cheaper offerings from Sihu. I think there was one time when I almost fell. Um, when I tried it for the first time, you know, when, when I leaned back without having the lock on, I almost did. It tilted a bit, but I, I was able to, to um, just to go back. If you own this chair, you should be careful of doing a full tilt, okay? Incubus32, Sir, awesome review. My only concern po, tanong ko lang, mataas pa rin po ba yung armrest na even set at the lowest position? Yes, it's higher than others. It takes a little bit of getting used to, um, especially when um, you are in a working position. They being Chua. Can you measure the height of the top of the headrest, the handrest, um, to the top of the mesh for the seat? Okay. And I want to know the height of the handrest at the lowest position to the floor as well for table height. Handrest from the top of the mesh, 22 centimeters. Handrest lowest to the floor. 65 centimeters from millennial wizard is it taller than the m57 i'm worried that this is only for tall people it's taller than the m57 because you can adjust it and no i don't think it's only for taller people from stefan jansen's hey what webcam do you use and what camera to record your vlogs c920 yeah, it was one of the old ones and I actually bought it prior to the pandemic. I bought it for 2500 I think. And what camera do you do to record your vlogs? Good question. So right now I'm using a Sony ZV-E10 um, with a 16mm Sigma 1.4. And then I also have a Lumix G7 and I also use uh, an Osmo Action. Yeah, the very first one, the M57. Okay, this one has, let's see how many comments this has. Oh, this one has 161 comments. Let's see. What's the measurement po from the floor to the uh, to the highest setting of armrest? Oh, the highest setting of the armrest for the M57 is 75 centimeters. Sir, ask ko lang po hanggang what weight po yung kaya ng Sihu M57? It is... 330 pounds. Hi, is the mesh quality the same 
for both the Sihu M57 and V1. So far, with, with all the chairs that I've tested, I cannot tell um, there's a significant difference. Some models have a tighter mesh. The M90C has a tighter mesh in the backrest that uh, I actually did not like. I, I like uh, the other models that have a not so tight mesh. But in terms of the material, um, I couldn't tell the difference. Okay, another question from Sheila Bernal. Okay, hi, what do you think of the M90 po para adjustable yung backrest height? Kasi medyo matangkad din po ako. Di po ba ang comfortable na hindi po covered yung buong likod kapag nakasangandal sa M57? Okay. When I was using the M57, I didn't really notice it not being able to cover the back. But when I went to chairs that had back adjustment, uh, I couldn't go back. If you are working with uh, a budget around 10,000 and you want an adjustable back, the M90 is a good option. The only thing I'm not a fan of with that chair is that it feels small because the seat pan is not adjustable. So the seat space doesn't feel that big. So just keep that in mind. Next question from Jan SRV. Are you able to play guitar on it comfortably? I had a hard time finding one ergo chair that allows me to practice guitar on it without the right armrest stuck the way. Stuck in the way. To be honest, I was not able to play the guitar comfortably in the Sihu chair. Uh, because of that limitation, it has armrest and well, technically you can take out the armrest. But, uh, I mean, I wouldn't do that. So, I don't play the guitar as much in the ergonomic chair. I still go to the couch just to practice guitar. Okay, still using it, sir. Um, the M57, I sold it to my friend. Um, so, I'm now using the Sihu V1 as my daily driver. Next question from Leslie Degamo. Um, Kamusta yung feel ng mesh sheet sa bare skin? Rough ba like pag naka engine sit? Going from a foam chair to a mesh mesh chair, um, the differences are positive actually. I I don't feel I lose in terms of comfort. Um, I gain in terms of the coolness because there's a lot more breeze uh, going into your legs, especially if you don't have an air conditioned room. Uh, I don't sit in Indian sit uh, because I, I can't fit. Um, how about durability? A question from Batsology. Um, durability, it's uh, very durable. Uh, I can speak um, using it for a couple of months. Um, we'll check again after a year or two. Question from John Doe. I hope you upload more videos. Where did you get your footrest, the white one? I got mine from Tempor. There was a sale before, but you can still buy it at Tempor. I think it's a bit pricey though. Uh, Things We Use actually has one that is looks similar but it's a lot cheaper i think it's around 1500 um, okay question from carl i have hairy legs congratulations <laughs> will it be comfortable for someone like me if i own a mesh material yeah i don't think it's an issue i have hairy legs too <laughs> so i don't it's not it hasn't been an issue for me i'd like to ask if the headrest is removable thank you yes so far all of the chairs I've tested have removable headsets, or sorry, headrests. How about Mary Fair Wow or Moto Shul? Moto Shul. I haven't tested them yet. Um, although, I just let you guys know um, there will be uh, different brands of ergonomic chairs coming in. Um, I still haven't finalized the details yet, but um, some of the other manufacturers have agreed to send. Um, their chairs for review so stay tuned for that um, Diane Kezel that's tour Malapit na. almost there that's actually the end of the questions I hope you guys enjoyed this video it's a lot of questions but um, I think it, it really helps you kind of form your opinion on which chair you want to get and what are the shortcomings and maybe good things about any specific chair so yeah i hope you guys like this video um i'm gonna start some of these types of videos uh in the channel 
if you're not subscribed yet uh, please make sure you do and as always i'll see you guys in the next one